YouTube. What's the righteous word? It's your boy Gangland Neem, aka Neeman, I before the E. Golly, I don't know y'all. Remember that. And we back with another video. So, G Face. We all know what's going on with G Face. 1090 Jake dropped the video and the paperwork showing that this guy was a DEA informant. Um, y'all can go to that uh 1090 Jake video and check that out yourself. From the moment that I saw this guy, I knew that there was something going on with him. It's just the way that he moved. Uh, my discernment is fire. I'm going to just tell y'all. You know what I'm saying? Um, if this is your first time to the channel, please like, subscribe, comment, and share. Please and thank you. We need that for the algorithm. If you could go to the top of the page, smash that Instagram link. Follow me on Instagram. Shoot me any content y'all want me to react to there. Also, hit that Discord. Join me there. Hit that TikTok link and follow me there as well. Now, Y'all could go back in my um, reactions and peep the videos that I did about G-Face from the moment that he hit the scene. He was popping up with this hood, nigga, this hood, nigga, ah, uh, and I'm like, yo, what's up with him? It's something about him that just doesn't sit well with me. And then we find out he's an informant from 1090 Jake. Um, he lied on Snoopy Badass talking about he had some dude um, who Snoopy had snitched on. That was all false. You know what I'm saying? So it was mad red flags that I was peeping like, yo, what's up with this? You know what I'm saying? But anyway, he's a DEA informant and this is him from the feds um, responding to all the allegations. You feel me? So we're going to get into this and then we'll chop about it after. This guy crazy, y'all. Day one, shout out No Jumper, 1090 Jake, Wack 100, and all these social media posts. I gotta post whatever they gotta post about me. I understand I'm a hot topic, I'm viral, people just speaking on my name, but I'm gonna say this. I'm a I don't know about viral. You know what I'm saying? I don't know about viral, my boy. Over here in prison, in federal jail, on a spiritual journey, in my own mind, I'm not gonna speak bad about nobody. But I just wanted to share something with y'all. It's very, very difficult when people, the whole world speaks on you on some bullshit. I got nothing to do with you. When you in here by yourself, taking your deal by yourself. But instead of going off on people and having hatred in my heart, I've been praying to God and asking for understanding. So I've been reading a book by this lady called Joyce Mayer. Remember, I'm on the lockdown, so I got nothing else to do but count bricks and read books. So I want to share something with y'all. One of the quickest ways to complicate your life is to be easily offended and hold grudges. God tells us in his word to be quick to forgive for a reason. He wants us to enjoy peace, and that is impossible if you are bitter, resentful, and angry. Refusing to forgive is like an acid that destroys the container it is in. God is our vindicator, and he promises to deal with our enemies if we trust him to do so. He says we should pray for those who hurt us instead of being angry at them. And when we do, it releases God to deal with the person who has wronged us. We actually do ourselves a favor when we forgive because it releases us from a prison of inner turmoil and greatly simplifies our life. If we are confused and upset inside, it affects our daily life in a negative way. So I just want you all to understand I don't hold no grudges for nobody. I'm here. I forgive everyone who wronged me. I don't care about what anybody that doesn't know me on this planet says about me. Those are words. Those are opinions that people could have about me. I'm on my way to federal prison for a few years. I'm going to take a deal for some bullshit-ass SBA loan. Once the case is over, once I took the deal, I'm pretty sure the whole world will see that I have went to prison every time by myself only. Never had a crimey, never had anyone. And for everyone from No Jumper to... Whack 100 to 1090 Jake. This is the time right now to scour the internet, get your DMs, check your DMs, and make sure somebody sends y'all a police report, any type of paper, confidential informant, anything speaking on me. I'm pretty sure I got a bunch of haters that's waiting to burn me on the cross. So here it is. Come one, come all, everyone. Post your paperwork if y'all got something on me. Post a police report. I don't give a fuck if the name is covered. Do something. I dare y'all. Because ain't nothing on my name, ain't no smut on my name, ain't not one motherfucker ever got a fucking citation because of me. But like I said, I forgive for those who do not know me. But for the people that been in my corner, understand that I've been sitting back quietly watching, no statements, no nothing. Taking screenshots of everybody that was out there with me, that fuck with me on a personal level, that came to my house, that ate food on my table. I'm getting records of everything. 
And when I'm out, like Pac said, respect me like you expect Jesus to come back, nigga. I'm coming. Peace. Now, um, I'm going to tell you, he says some uh, real stuff in there, but that end part, like, was super problematic for me. Like, bro, you are an Armenian from a Mexican gang saying nigga. I don't know, but he hangs around with a lot of different gang members who probably gave him the okay to say that, but that was super wild to me. Um, what I do want to say is he had a message in there that was absolutely true. You know what I'm saying? Y'all cannot be having hate and anger in your heart. Y'all got to leave that to Allah. Let him handle that. You feel me? Make Salat and leave it to him because he will handle it. That was real. And it's funny that I find these messages with these people who just like, they're just, uh, you know, not trustworthy, not honest or anything. But, but you know what I'm saying? Here and there, they would say this real stuff. Like he said, he'd been in there reading. Um, he got a few years to do. But uh, that message was absolutely right. Don't have that hate on your heart. Now, um, to actually what's going on, like, with bro, he's saying, come one, come all with the paperwork and everything. Yo, you could have did this before they caught you up because 1090 Jake laid that out clear as the day. Again, I tell you all the time that I'm not a paperwork guy. I'm not, like, with that, like. I'm not a gang member or no street nigga like that where like paperwork even makes a difference to me. Like, I don't really care nothing about that. But what I'm going to tell you is I watched that video in its entirety and dog, it, they're breaking it down to like his attorneys even saying that he's a confidential DEA informant. Like, so I don't really know what else you what paperwork you want people to put in folks dms or whatever um he said he got a uh he's being locked up right now for a sba loan um i told y'all about his trucking company where he was doing uh fraud and scamming in the in the trucking industry i showed y'all where lambord trucking had uh did a piece on him and how he double brokers which is basically it, it, it's trucking fraud like I said, I don't know the industry like that, but when it comes to double brokering, it is something that is frowned upon in the industry and look and it is classified as fraud. He went on the Internet and told how he does that proudly. You know what I'm saying? But, um, you know, that's his response. Uh, I, like I said, I like what he said about the uh, the hate in your heart and all that. But then he starts um getting back into, you know the old G face toward the the end of the video. Um, I feel like he's got a lot more to be worried about than the internet. You know what I'm saying? This is a man who's facing a few years. He's saying that like, if it's just a cakewalk and I don't know how niggas be in prison. It's just like, Oh, it's nothing, man. I just hit the yard and program all that. Like, that's cool. But nobody want to be locked up. You know what I'm saying? And to me, it sounds like he does have vengeance and stuff like that in his heart. He mentioned No Jumper. He mentioned 1090 Jake at the end of the video. And he didn't seem like his sentiments were so favorable toward them. Not like the beginning when he said he forgives everybody and all that. But it's like he warmed up during this response. And at the end is how he, he really felt. He said he's taking screenshots and pictures and taking names of everybody and all the whole thing. And that's cool, man. That's cool. But... You know, in all actuality, this man has a lot more to be worried about than public opinion. You know what I mean? It's people from his hood saying this, people from his old hood saying this. Uh, you, you, dog, you've got a lot more to be worried about. And right now, you're being transported to the feds, doggy. Like, I don't care if it's one year. Niggas ain't trying to be locked up, bro. You really need to get your head right and figure how you're going to hit the streets and do what you did again. But legitimately. Now, if this is your first time to the channel, please like, subscribe, comment, and share, please. And thank you. We need that for the algorithm. If you go to the top of the page, smash that Instagram link. Follow me on Instagram. Shoot me any content y'all want me to react to there. Yeah, comment down below and let me know what y'all think about this. Is G Face um, gonna come out a changed man or is G Face gonna come out just back on his regular bullshit? Y'all let me know. It's your boy Gangland Neem. Peace.